The doctor's old. How can I not love him? This is Veda number 12. What? Two in one day? Gee, I just went from Viota to Vitata. Doctor Who Series 8 began last night. When we last saw the Doctor, he had just regenerated into a version of himself who looked amazingly like Peter Capaldi. The ninth Doctor was played by an actor in his 40s, barely. The 10th by an actor in his 30s. The 11th by one in his 20s. Extrapolating, you'd expect they'd hire a teenager this time around. But no, they went and hired a man in his 50s. The episode is Deep Breath, written by Stephen Moffat, directed by Ben Wheatley. Music, as usual, is by Murray Gold, who found yet another way to orchestrate the opening theme. Moffat spent what seemed like a huge amount of time this episode just dealing with Capaldi's age. They seemed to feel that the doctor's young companion, Clara, and through her, the audience, needed some extra help, accepting that there's an old guy piloting the TARDIS. Again. Back in the Matt Smith era, the doctor had found a posse, a quirky trio, living on Paternoster Row in Victorian London. They consisted of a Silurian, that's to say a humanoid reptile, called Madame Vastra, a Sontaran, that's to say a humanoid warrior nurse potato, don't ask, called Strax, and a human, that is to say a human, called Jenny. Strax is played for broad laughs as a fish out of water or a Sontaran among humans. I hope somebody finds him funny. Maybe the kiddies do. Do kiddies laugh at Strax? To me, he's the Jar Jar Binks of Doctor Who. Moffat contrives, by a method I don't want to spoil, to get Clara and the new Doctor into Victorian-era London and into the presence of the Paternoster gang. That gives Madame Vastra a chance to help poor, unhappy Clara accept that she's now the companion of an old, old doctor. God, the ageism on that Clara. But even wise and patient Madame Vastra can't get through to her, so Clara gets even more convincing through a method that I also won't spoil, although I'm pretty sure by now the secret is out. I really couldn't help thinking that if you have to work that hard to justify having an older actor in the role, maybe you should have gone and hired a younger one. Of course, age is relative. As Vastra points out, the doctor is chronologically 2,000 years old. So if he looks like a guy in his mid-50s, he's not doing that badly. Regeneration is a wonderful convention for renewing and refreshing the program. The new doctor, as regulars know, is not a new person. He's still the doctor, the same history, and as many of the same memories as he can access through the cobwebs. But he gets a new personality, a new face, a new accent, new wardrobe, new quirks, new catchphrases, new TARDIS, and over course of time, new merchandise. Although so far, Peter Capaldi's Sonic seems indistinguishable from Matt Smith's. The threat in this episode is from a foe that Moffat developed back when David Tennant was playing the Tenth Doctor. We first met them in The Girl in the Fireplace. Visually, though, effects have advanced to where these creatures can take on a much creepier appearance, although apparently budget allows only one of them to support the new look, the hollow head, gear-turning look. These guys have, for nefarious reasons, been responsible for an outbreak of spontaneous combustions that have taken the lives of too many Londoners. Madame Vastra deduces the reason behind the combustions based on no evidence, with no corroboration. She's just that good. Or maybe she peeked at the script. And despite his considerable post-regeneration disorientation, the Doctor manages to save Victorian London from the baddies. Although he did it off-camera. So exactly how he did it remains a little ambiguous. My favorite scenes, Doctor on the roof in his nightshirt, offering words of comfort to a dinosaur. Clara standing up to the baddie. Clara and the Doctor chatting in a restaurant and gradually realizing that it happens to be the worst restaurant in the world. Least favorite scene, the battle between the baddies and the Paternoster gang. What a confusing mishmash. In general, I prefer the talking scenes to the action scenes. Maybe talking is better suited to TV budgets, TV schedules, than action. If you're keeping track, the Doctor is now flinty and fierce, no longer flirty and friendly. And he's very funny. Very funny. And very Scottish. Capaldi is an excellent, excellent choice. I only hope Moffat and his writers can keep him supplied with scripts worthy of his talents. I look forward to seeing Capaldi's Doctor when the effects of regeneration have passed and he's operating at full mental capacity. He seems to be a man of purpose in this incarnation, someone with unfinished business that he intends to conclude. The episode also teases us with a character called Missy, who has clearly taken an interest in the Doctor and Clara, and probably not for good reasons. I'm sure we'll be hearing more from Missy. Until next time, I'm Mikola. DVD Extras. Peter Capaldi may be the oldest Doctor in the revived series, but he's just about the same age that William Hartnell was when he originated the role back in 1963. While this group of Doctor Who villains was developed by Stephen Moffat, the spark of the idea came from Russell T. Davis, who was fascinated by the Turk, a 
chess-playing automaton from the 18th century. Neil Gaiman brought us a version of the Turk last series in the episode called Nightmare in Silver. The Paternoster Gang feels like a spin-off in the making, doesn't it? The Russell T. Davis era saw two spin-offs, the Sarah Jane Adventures for younger viewers and Torchwood for the older ones. Will the Paternoster Gang be the first Doctor Who spin-off of the Moffat era? What do you think? Will the BBC pay for it? Last week I put up an ice bucket challenge. Here's a little BTS. Now, I usually film indoors, but I was not about to dump ice water in the house. I had a little trouble managing my temporary green screen. I think I should have taped it to the wall. Sun was definitely a problem. Hard to pull a key with the light so uneven. Turned me all pink in the finished version. My roommate, Leslie Stiles, did the honors. And here it is in slow-mo. Hmm. <laughs> I tagged Christina Horner, Barnacle's Nerdgasm, and That Zack. Their deadlines have passed. I haven't seen any action from them, so I'm going to issue a couple more tags. Rory Hollywood, you are tagged. Bill TV Macon, you are tagged. Barry Aldridge, you're tagged. And one guy I'm absolutely sure will do this, Rad Haggis, you're tagged. In fact, he's done it already. How's that for a timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly paradox? Here is my collection of previous Doctor Who reviews and a couple of songs. Here's my current series of movies about movies. Bye now.